Ladies and gentlemen, we are live! I'm Jerry. I'm Kevin. And I'm Tom. It's time! Live from the CSB studios in Westbury, New York, it's the Tom and Jerry Sports Show. Featuring co-host Kevin Dolan and the host that's been here since day one, Jerry Napoleonello. On Zeno Radio and on All Noise Radio. Tom and Jerry Sports Show live on Zeno Radio, Cyber Station USA, All Noise Radio, Stitcher, and the Live 365 apps. I'm Jerry Napoleonello, no Kevin Donlin today. Thanks for deciding to spend your afternoon with me. We have a Super Bowl winner. The Denver Broncos are Super Bowl 50 champions. The number to call 605-562-7085. Press 5 to be heard live. But let's start off with the Tom and Jerry Sports Show 60-second summary. Super Bowl 50, Denver Broncos and Carolina Panthers faced off in Santa Clara in San Francisco 49ers new Levi Stadium after a quick controversial call on a catch that wasn't the play after Von Miller later named Super Bowl MVP strip sacks Cam Newton and recovered by uh, by Denver in the end zone from there on the Broncos front four harassed Cam and never gave up that lead as Peyton Manning can now ride off into the sunset with his second Super Bowl win and what will be a Hall of Fame career. And the Panthers have a third and ten. Here comes pressure and they've gotten to him. The ball is out in the end zone and it's recovered by Malik Jackson for the touchdown. It was Vaughn Miller with the strip sack and Jackson with the recovery. Nobody opened. New York Islanders were the only local team in action yesterday, and they were clicking on all cylinders as they beat the Oilers 8-1. Kyle Oposo collected his second career hat-trick. Harris. Zizekas right in front. The pass to Oposo. And he scores! It's the hat-trick for Kyle Oposo. And the celebration begins. Kyle Oposo with his third goal of the game. Knicks were the only ba- local basketball team in action as they drop another one to the Nuggets. Knicks have lost, uh, have now lost five straight and nine out of their last, last ten. And news came out that Derek Fisher was fired today. Now Moutier around the screen to free and the battle ball changes and slams it all. And I'm Jerry Napoleonello with your Tom and Jerry Sports Show 60-second summary brought to you by Overtime. The game never ends. And boy, what a Super Bowl it was. Uh, it was a very sloppy Super Bowl. You, you can't really say it was a, a great one. Uh, you love to see uh, Peyton Manning get his, his second Super Bowl and most likely his last game in the NFL. Um, you'd be lying to yourself if you didn't think that it wasn't going to be his last game. I mean, his his contract is up with Denver Broncos. Uh, he most likely will not be with Denver next year. So if he does come back um, for some crazy reason, uh, it's not going to be with the Denver Broncos. Um, obviously, there was one team that was interested in him, and it was the St. Louis Rams. Those are the only ones that have uh, expressed any anything in Peyton Manning and it's the only other th- other team that they've been talking about with Peyton Manning but it was a great Super Bowl um I had a great Super Bowl uh I uh, won some money with my boxes so uh I was very happy that the Broncos uh that Cam Newton actually fumbled that ball at the end the Broncos ended up going in for the score uh and then they went for two which gave me the win so uh I, I loved I loved seeing that um Obviously, there's a lot of controversy around that uh, that fumble at the end of the game anyway. But uh, first, I mean, we'll get into the whole game as a whole here. Um, Denver ended up winning, uh, ended up getting the ball in the beginning of the game. Uh, Lady Gaga was great uh, in the national anthem. I thought that was great. Uh, the halftime show was, eh, you know, I, I it was okay. Um, you know, from the beginning, when they when they first named uh, Coldplay the you know 
the halftime show, I, I kind of like uh, uh, it was like a head scratcher to me. Um, you know, they're they're not they're not that type of um, I guess band or or any type of um, you know entertainment that is great for football. It's not like I, I just don't see it as a as as a clicking you know match uh, with Coldplay and and the NFL, um, but. I think that, you know, in my eyes, I, I think that the NFL saw the backlash of it um, and figured they might as well put a big name in there. Um, and Beyonce was the one. Uh, and Bruno Mars was in it. Uh, I think Bruno Mars might have been the best part of the whole, you know, halftime show. I think he did great. Um, it was pretty cool at the end uh, where, uh, you know, Coldplay was playing their one song. I forget what it's called, but, you know, they're on the piano and they're just showing all the, um, you know, the past halftime shows of, you know, the NFL for obviously being that this was the 50th anniversary. They kind of, uh, they played that up as a, you know, as a theme. Uh, and it was cool. I mean, even in the beginning of the game, they introduced all the former um, or past MVPs um, of the of the Super Bowl. I thought that was cool. Um, you know, obviously, I thought it was going to get longer. I thought it was going to be a longer, you know, pregame because of, you know, that. But then I started to think about, you know, some of these players have won multiple MVPs, like Tom Brady has three. So, um, you know, that, that, was, that was pretty cool. I like that. Um, and then, obviously, in the halftime show where they played all the, the um, past halftime shows and, and performers, uh, I thought that was cool. Um, but, uh, you know, back to the game, you know, Denver got the ball first. They went down, uh, kicked a field goal. Um, th- like I said, this was a very sloppy game. Peyton Manning really didn't have anything. Cam Newton definitely didn't have anything. Um, but, uh, the, you know, the second drive, you know, Carolina got the ball and um, – you know, Denver's defense was just all over him. Uh, ended up being a strip sack. Uh, Von Miller was all over Cam Newton. You would have thought Von Miller was the actual number one on Cam Newton's jersey. That's how tight he was on him. Um, you know, it, it was just Von Miller. And you know what? You you start to think, you know, what if Von Miller was in that Super Bowl two years ago against Seattle? You know, is that is that a different game? Is that... <laughs> Or is that just a difference in you know being a blowout? But um, he was he was all over, and he he won the MVP. He definitely deserved it. Absolutely, I, I thought if they would have gave it to um, you know Peyton Manning or anybody else like that, I thought that would have been ridiculous. Um, Demarcus Ware played well. I mean, this whole front four played very well. Um, as I said, it was a fumble, uh, strip sack fumble. Von Miller literally pulled the ball out of Cam Newton's hands, like pulled the ball out. Um, and Wolf landed on it in the end zone. Denver takes a quick 10 nothing lead and really never turned back from there. And, you know, it was, it was different in this, in this game. It was just, uh, I mean, first of all, you never saw a team get at Carolina the way that Denver did in this game all year. I mean, there was not one team. I mean, even in their loss to Atlanta, Atlanta didn't do anything special, you know, not like what Denver did. And, I mean, this Denver defense was, was unbelievable, and, and especially in the playoffs. Um, but but mostly all year because Peyton Manning wasn't really anything special this year. I mean, what do you have, nine touchdowns, 17 interceptions all year? Um, then he got hurt, and Brock Osweiler was in there. And, you know, to, to be honest with you, it wasn't like Brock Osweiler did anything special either. He was 5-2 and two as a starter, uh, but he didn't do anything special. Like, it wasn't, you know, anything to, to brag about. There wasn't – he didn't, like, grasp the starting, you know, position. And neither did Peyton Manning, but it's Peyton Manning. That, you know, that's, that's really all you have to say is it's Peyton Manning. Um, But as I said, Brock Osweiler didn't do anything special this year, Peyton Manning. But the reason that this team was where they were and in the Super Bowl was because of that defense. And, you know, it was because of Von Miller, DeMarcus Ware, Wolf, um, Chris Harris Jr., uh, T.J. Ward. 
you know, basically everybody on that team, everybody on that defense, uh, played a part, um, and, and definitely in this in this Super Bowl. I mean, there there was nothing that you can say that the offense did anything special. They they really didn't do anything special. Peyton Manning was thirteen to twenty three, one hundred and forty one yards, and and an interception. He didn't even have a touchdown in this game. Um, it was very. Um, they, you know, how can I say it? They, they really, it was really game management. I mean, that's all it was. Peyton Manning just played the game manager role. And, you know, you have to give it to Gary Kubiak and this offense because that's what they did. And they kept, you know, they, they kept it in, they kept the lead, really. That's all you had to say. You know, they, they really, like I said, they didn't do anything special. They game managed this. You know, they managed the game, basically. Um, you know, and, and if you really look at it, um, Peyton Manning, uh, I think they said, yeah, Peyton Manning had a 9.9 total QBR in, in, in the Super Bowl. Um, and entering this game, QBs who posted a QBR lower than 10 were 3-25 and 25 this season, including the postseason. 3-25. and 25. And if that doesn't show you that this was, game, uh, this was you know, they managed this game, um, and if you really think about it, this defense was ridiculous. This defense won them. And you know what? That the, 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 the same line, and I've been saying it for the last three weeks, the same line always prevails. That famous line, defense wins championships. Offense sells tickets. Defense wins championships, and that's what happened in this game. Defense won the championship. And you know what? Carolina has had that uh, has had a good defense, a very good defense. Um, but they're nothing special either. I, I mean, they just have great players in in each position. Um, their secondary was always their question. Um, but it, you know, Denver didn't do anything to uh, beat up their their secondary really. Um, you know, Peyton Manning had a few throws here and there, but you know, one thing that I do have to say, Emmanuel Sanders is a great wide receiver. He really is a great wide receiver. Um, I like watching him play. Um, in the beginning of the game, he had a keep to leave. Um, you know, I, I think he had three flags in the first quarter. I mean, that's something that you can't do. He had the one personal foul. Um, he's lucky that you know they, that Carolina was just you know really backpedaling the whole game. Um, because that, those could have those could have hurt them really. Um, Cam Newton, I never really seen him uh, get harassed like he did in this game. Um, you know, and, and if you really think about it, Von Miller, uh, you know, the whole postseason, Von Miller is the the only player with five sacks and an interception in a single postseason since sacks were officially tracked in 1982. That's crazy. I mean that just goes to show you how good this player is. Um, you know his his contract his contract is up, um, and I definitely look to uh, to see uh, Denver most likely franchise tagging him. I don't see him. Uh, I, I mean they they might give him a, a max deal, but uh, I, I would have to say that you're probably going to see a franchise tag, um, and you might see Demarcus Ware walk. Uh, but other than that, um, you know. I mean, they, they, they managed the game, and they won the game 24 to 10 um, and helped me win my box. So I'm happy. I'm happy. I would have liked to see – you know, I, I, I don't have anything against Cam Newton, and I, and I, I love to see this guy do what he does. So he's, a, he's a freak of nature. Um, but it was nice to see Peyton Manning, and definitely I'm wearing my DeMarcus Ware jersey right now because of, you know, I, I love this guy, especially when he was on the Cowboys. Obviously, everybody knows that I'm a Cowboys fan. Um, so it was nice to see him. He deserved it. He's a great player, definitely a Hall of Fame player. He deserves a Super Bowl, and he got that with Denver. And uh, let's see if he comes back to the Cowboys this year, you know. But uh, we still have more on the Super Bowl when we get back on the Tom and Jerry Sports Show. Do you have sports opinions or do you want to start your own sports debate? Then Overtime is right for you. Overtime is an app for sports lovers made by sports lovers. This is the best place to talk about sports. Overtime is available at the iTunes App Store. Be a part of something big and help us take the game to OT. Overtime, the game never ends. Follow the NFL this season on the Tom and Jerry Sports Show. Time 
radio station USA is the future of radio. Get your business into the online future at the world's largest internet radio station. From banner placement on our homepage to any of our broadcaster stages, commercials on our video player, audio spots on any of our shows, or at the beginning of any of our on-demand broadcasts. Cyber Station USA offers competitive rates with a worldwide reach, a fully integrated one-stop shop social media broadcast platform. For more information, please contact our sales department at Cameo at CyberStationUSA.com. All Noise Radio. Powered by the Connecticut School of Broadcasting. All Noise Radio is an internet radio station that's fully produced by graduates of the Connecticut School of Broadcasting. From modern rock to old school hip hop, country to classical, news, talk, sports, and more. It's the noise you can't ignore. Log on to allnoiseradio.com. Fire up the station. Find out more about your favorite jocks. Get the latest CSB news and more. Plus, you can take All Noise Radio with you on the go for free. Just download the Live 365 app to your iPhone, iPod Touch, or BlackBerry and search All Noise Radio. Check out tomorrow's broadcasters today at allnoiseradio.com. Powered by the Connecticut School of Broadcasting. Tom and Jerry Sports Show featuring Kevin Donlin live every Monday on Xeno Radio and re-airs every Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern on Cyber Station USA and the Stitcher app. You can also tune in every Wednesday and Friday at 5 p.m. Eastern on All Noise Radio and the Live 365 app. Follow us on Instagram at Tom and Jerry Sports Show and join the conversation on Twitter at TNJ Sports or visit our website at tnjsports.weebly.com or call in to 605-562-7085. Press 5 to be heard live. And we're back. Uh, we were talking about the Super Bowl, obviously. Um, but, uh, you know, going back into, you know, Peyton Manning, uh, I mean, he, he had a great career. Most think that this will be it for, you know, the, um, you know his career, really. I, I mean, he had... Um, Every, you know, everybody saw the clip and, you know, how the mics caught him telling um, Bill Belichick that, you know, this will probably be his last rodeo. It's been a pleasure, everything like that. Um, so I, I'm I'm anticipating that it's going to be – that was going to be the last game that we were going to see um, him play. Um but uh, other than that, I mean, he just, you know, he was one of the greatest to ever play the game. Um, again, me and Kevin disagree with this. Um, Kevin thinks that he's the greatest of all time. I don't. Um, I think it, you know, I honestly think that Tom Brady is the greatest of all time. There's no there's no, you know, fighting that. that that's how I feel. But he feels differently. He thinks Peyton Manning. I, I mean, both of these guys are great quarterbacks. They, they really are great quarterbacks. Um, you know, you love to watch Peyton Manning come to the line, literally call out the defenses, you know, what they're what they're working with. What you know, where what play that they're 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 doing. You know, it's something like that. Whatever it is, you know, you you, you love to see him come to the line and, and just call out everything. And you know, and he's done it so long. He's always done it um his whole career. And towards the end of his career, obviously this year especially, you know, he had to start using his brain even more because, you know, his athletic ability wasn't there. Like his ability to throw the ball just wasn't there this year. Um, Who knows, you know, if it's the injuries or anything like that. You don't know what is going to come of, you know, this offseason. He obviously told them, you know, everybody that he's going to think it over. Um, They're saying that you probably going to get about um you know two weeks till you get his you know his verdict um Peyton Manning you know uh he he got his two million dollar bonus uh for winning the Super Bowl this year uh that was nice especially if it's going to be his last game um he got his second he he went over um in his postseason record um he's 14 and 13 now but uh you know you, you just this is one of the greatest to play it. Um, you know, I'm going to go over his his career numbers right now. Um, you know, career numbers: 266 games, 
Uh, he had uh, 65.3% uh, completion rating, 71,940 yards, uh, 539 touchdowns, um, 251 interceptions. I mean, this guy, a 96.5 QB rating. Uh, you know, this, this, this was a great career, a great career. Um, you had 14 years in Indian- Indianapolis, four years in Denver. Um, you can't ask for a better, a better, you know, career. Um, I thought it was funny when they showed Eli Manning um, up in the box after I think it was a, I think it was the fumble recovery um, towards the end of the game, or it might have been the touchdown at the end of the game. Whatever it was, um, it, it pretty much locked up, you know, Denver's, you know, Super Bowl win. Uh, and you saw Eli, and it looked like it looked like he had money on on Carolina to win the game. That's what it kind of looked like, or or he kind of just played it in his head that he's got nothing up on his brother anymore. <laughs> They're tied now for Super Bowl wins. Um, the Manning family now has four Super Bowls. Um, they've been in six. Uh, obviously, Peyton Manning being in four. Um, he's two and two in the Super Bowl. Um, this is the, this is going to be a no brainer when it comes to the, you know the Hall of Fame, and I'm going to get into um, because we had the the Hall of Fame inductees um, on Saturday for the NFL Honors uh, Award Show, which is you know it, it's it's fun to watch that you know that's a, you know it's like an award show like you see like the Oscars, the Grammys, and stuff like that, but it's for sports. I mean, who wouldn't want to see that? Uh, and it's actually it's only for the NFL, but. Um, I didn't get to watch it, but I know who who's who won the awards. So I'll go over the awards uh, probably in the third segment. Um, but uh, you know, I, I thought it was I thought it was pretty funny to see Eli in the uh, in the box, you know, all upset and everything like that. But um, first, in the day in this day and age, social media has become such a pivotal part of people's lives. Well, now there's an app called Overtime that brings sports and social media together. It allows you to post photos as well as video of all sports-related news and highlights. It gives you access to debate all sports topics with other sports fanatics, as well as giving you a platform to break sports news yourself. Go to the iTunes App Store to download Overtime, an app for sports lovers made by sports lovers. Um, and obviously, you know, overtime was a great app to uh, to have, uh, especially this weekend, especially with the Super Bowl. Um, I thought that was, uh, you know, it's a great app. Go download it at, at the iTunes App Store. Uh, but uh, one thing that I saw um, just as I was actually coming to the studio today, um, Russell Wilson, obviously on the Players Tribune, uh, Derek Jeter's wa- website where players can, uh, you know, put up letters and articles and whatever they want uh, to, to be heard. Um, and obviously one of um, the players that have connected with Derek Jeter and, and this, this website was Russell Wilson. And Russell Wilson wrote uh, something nice uh, about Peyton Manning. And uh, I'm going to read it for you now. Um, he says, from all the wins to the few tough losses, from the 71,000 yards to all the touchdowns to the few interceptions, from all the meetings to all the hard practices to all the film to all the blood, sweat, and tears, from all the Pro Bowls to the handful of MVPs to the two Lombardi trophies, from all the teammates to all the opponents to all the fans, from the blue and white to the blue and orange. Sheriff, if this is it, there's one moment I won't forget. 10th grade Louisiana at your quarterback camp. And he shows a picture of uh, himself in a uh, group of kids, obviously listening to whoever was talking. You inspired the kid in the green shirt. You inspired me to work hard, to be disciplined, to be respectful, to take notes. You inspired me to love this process, to love the sweat, to love the tears. But most of all, you inspired me to love the game. Thanks, Peyton. If this is it, thanks. Russell Wilson. I thought that was I thought that was an awesome article. Uh, I you know obviously everybody knows I'm not a big fan of Russell Wilson, um, but that's only because of his play on the uh, on the field um, and how everybody perceive him on the field. But uh, Russell Wilson as a as a man um, is a great guy. He's a great guy. He does a lot for you know the the society and everything like that. Um, 
But I, I thought that article was, uh, you know, that, that letter that he wrote to, to Peyton Manning was awesome. That caught my eye, and I read it, um, and I, I had to, you know, put it out there. Um, so if you guys want to see some of these articles, definitely go to uh, the Players Tribune. They even have a Twitter, uh, obviously, the Players Tribune. Um, check that out. Uh, Demarius Thomas also has an article up, uh, I think, about his mom. Uh, so go check that out if you want. Um, but, uh, you know, to controversy, obviously, you know, like I said in the 60-second summary, there was controversy with that catch, uh, the Jericho Cotri catch. Um, that was a problem. I thought it was a catch. Um, obviously, what happened after that was the Von Miller strip sack that ended up in the end zone um, that changed, you know, basically the momentum of the game, the game itself. Um, but Cam Newton just wasn't himself in this game. Um, you know, a lot of people say you didn't see that, you know, that Carolina Panther swag, um, that the Cam Newton swag that he, he's had all year long. And, um, you know, as I said, it's as I've always said, uh, it's kind of hard to, you know, have that kind of swag, have that, you know, happiness and everything when you're losing. And especially in the Super Bowl, he did look tight. He did look like it, it, it was a... Uh, it was getting to him, I guess you could say, and and it did look like you know Denver's defense was getting to him. Obviously, they, I mean they were all over him, but um, obviously a lot of people are going to talk about the 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 press conference at the end of the game. I guess after the, after the game. And a lot of people are going to talk about this and how, you know, people think he's a sore loser. And, you know, that was one of the other things that people were talking about before the game, um, how he, you know, shows up these teams and, and um, you know, how, how he is, you know, like from pout, pouting on the sideline, you know, the years past, and then how he was this year and, you know, jumping around, joking around, taking pictures. But I don't, I don't, the only thing that I didn't like out of that was obviously the, the, the team pictures before the game was over. I mean, they did that a couple of times where they were taking pictures, like team pictures, and there's still a minute or two minutes left in the game. And I didn't like that. I didn't like that. I thought that was a little ridiculous. I thought that was a little bit of showing up the other team. But the other things, the first downs, the you know, the touchdown dances and, and everything like that, I don't care. I, I don't know why anybody does care. Why do you care? Everybody does it. A guy sacks a guy and then does a dance. You know, every NFL player has said that they don't really... I mean, that's what they do. I mean, J.J. Watt was on Mike and Mike the other day, and he said he loved it. You know, and, and you know, when you like you, you see some of these guys, you know, it's all out of fun. You know, you know, it, you have fun in this game. That's, that's basically what you have to do. You have to have fun. It's a game. It's a game. Who cares? Let the guys do what they want. You know, when you start looking at a player and you get in his face and then you do that, then, then you, you cross the line. But Cam Newton is, is a great guy. He's the one that started handing the balls to the kids and then the whole team followed him. Every touchdown that was made by the Carolina Panthers was handed off to a fan. I mean, you can't you can't hate that, and, and for you to to say something about this guy, I mean, it's ridiculous. And you know what? At the end of the game, yeah, he did walk off the the podium. He did walk off. You can't do that, obviously. You can't. That that's something that you can't do. But you know what? He did lose the Super Bowl. He's allowed to pout. I mean, I I I don't see anybody on the sideline happy that they're losing how could you be happy that you lost i lose an xbox game and i and i'm i'm mad and in madden you know it, it's something like that like you know competitive people are not gonna love losing it's not gonna happen you can't you can't sit there and, and lose especially the super bowl this is the biggest game of all games this is the biggest game of American sports. 
This game is watched by millions and millions of people. Maybe because of the commercials. I don't know. But you know what? Football fans watch it because of the football. This is the biggest game. People want the Monday after the Super Bowl to be a national holiday. I agree. I do agree. But, you know, I I just... I can't hate him for doing what he's doing. You know, when he when he, when Carolina wasn't good and obviously getting, you know, high draft picks and stuff like that and they were losing, I, I can't hate him sitting on the sideline all pissed off. I, I can't hate him for that. You can't hate him for that. How could you? And, and for, you know... To be sitting up at the podium, you know, I know you have to do it for the NFL. Like, that's something that you have to do because that's how they, um, how can you say, you know, they kind of they kind of advertise through that. You know, they show that, you know, these, these players do care about the game because they're taking time out of their day, out of, you know, whatever, you know. I mean, Cam Newton didn't even go into the back, into the locker room to shower yet. He still had his football pants on. So, you know, it, it's a it's an open wound. You can't you can't hate him for being upset. That's all I'm saying. He's a great player. You know, he he really is. Uh he's a he's a freak of nature. Um so, I mean, I can't hate him for that. Um, but I, I'm going to get into uh, one more part that, you know, kind of was a head-scratcher for me um, with Cam Newton. But um, now it's time of the year where the NFL offseason has begun. We'll get into what you have to anticipate with this upcoming offseason when we get back. you are listening to the Tom and Jerry Sports Show. The Tom and Jerry Sports Show featuring Kevin Donlin live every Monday on Xeno Radio and re-airs every Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern on Cyberstation USA and the Stitcher app. You can also tune in every Wednesday and Friday at 5 p.m. Eastern on All Noise Radio and the Live 365 app. Follow us on Instagram at Tom and Jerry Sports Show and join the conversation on Twitter at TNJ Sports or visit our website at tnjsports.weebly.com or call in to 605-562-7085. Press 5 to be heard live. Follow the NFL this season on the Tom and Jerry Sports Show. Cameo Entertainment Group and Cyberstation USA are now part of Stitcher, a free radio app for your smartphone. With Stitcher, you can listen to live programming as well as archive radio programming right on your phone. To obtain Stitcher, just go to the App Store for your particular phone. Go to search, then type in Stitcher. That's Stitcher. S-T-I-T-C-H-E-R. S-T-I-T-C-H-E-R. Then download. It's that simple. Stitcher, a free radio app for your smartphone. Convenient access to live and archive Cyberstation USA programming on your mobile phone. That's Stitcher. S-T-I-T-C-H-E-R. Cyberstation USA. Always on the go. All Noise Radio, powered by the Connecticut School of Broadcasting. All Noise Radio is an internet radio station that's fully produced by graduates of the Connecticut School of Broadcasting. From modern rock to old school hip hop, country to classical, news, talk, sports, and more. It's the noise you can't ignore. Log on to allnoiseradio.com. Fire up the station. Find out more about your favorite jocks. Get the latest CSB news and more. Plus, you can take All Noise Radio with you on the go for free. Just download the Live 365 app to your iPhone, iPod Touch, or BlackBerry and search All Noise Radio. Check out tomorrow's broadcasters today at allnoiseradio.com. Powered by the Connecticut School of Broadcasting. And we're back. Um, 
before I keep going. Uh, you're speaking to Jerry, taking calls 605-562-7085. Press 5 to be heard live. Remember to join the conversation on Twitter at TNJ Sports or at our website, tnjsports.weebly.com. Tom and Jerry Sports Show now has its very own app. If you have an Android phone, be sure to, down- to download that through the Google Play Store. And be sure to download the new sports app, Overtime, at the iTunes App Store. Um, but, uh, you know, before, uh, before I keep going with, uh, you know, the NFL offseason, um, one of the uh, controversial calls, I guess, uh, you know, not really a call, but a uh, controversial move by Cam Newton was um, at the end um, with that fumble. He kind of pulled back and he didn't dive in to uh, the, the pile there. And uh, people are questioning that. And I, I kind of questioned it, too. I didn't know what he was doing. I didn't know wh- wh- why he did that. Um, you know, I, I heard something today. I think it was on Mike and Mike um, where I think it was Tim Hasselback said that the only way that he the only way that he can explain it is maybe Cam Newton didn't see the ball. But if you watch the video of it, he's looking straight at the ball. And then you see uh, DeMarcus Ware's arm reach for the ball, and then he pulled back. Um, that, was, that was big. It really was big. Um, because, you know, two plays, three plays later, four plays later, I think it was, um, you know, Denver ended up scoring a touchdown. And then they went for two and, they, you know, put me at zero and four. Winning the box. Can't tell you how excited I was about that. Um, but, you know, I, it just kind of, it was a head scratcher for me because, you know, it, it basically killed all hope for Carolina. Um you know, I don't know if you'll see that from any other quarterback where, you know, I, I think any other quarterback will just jump right in, um, which, kind of, which I, I mean, basically made me scratch my head even more because Cam Newton's a big dude. He's six, what, six five, two sixty. 260? Like, like we were saying last week, this guy could play any position on the field. He's a big guy. And, I mean, the, the hits that he was taking in this game – was he scared to get into that 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 huddle that uh you know that pile there? What was it? What was he doing? You know, I I can't really I I, I can't sit here and tell you what he was thinking uh, because obviously I'm not in his head. Um, another thing is you know was he afraid to get hurt? You know what was it? I don't know. And it and it's and it's it, it got to me a little bit because that's that's the one thing I did spot right away uh, especially on the first replay because you really couldn't see it uh in real time but once they played the replay i was like wow he actually stopped and didn't jump in what, what are you doing but i i mean that that was a you know that's going to be questioned for a while and probably most likely the whole off season until his next game which you know which sucks um, you know, trust me with, uh, especially with the, you know, the Des Bryant catch that wasn't, that actually was, um, you know, you had to, it had to be talked about the whole off season because that was basically the last play, <laughs> the last play of your season. Uh, but going into the off season now, uh, free agency, uh, the combine starts the end of February, I believe. I think tw- the 23rd, I want to say. I might be lying. I might be making that up. I don't know. Um, but I know it's coming up either the end of February, beginning of March. Um, and then I believe we have the draft is in April. Um, definitely be sure to watch that with uh, the Dallas Cowboys at number four. I like that. I would like Carson Wentz. I really would. Um, I think the Giants have number 10. Um, I haven't checked what the Jets have yet. I think they're in the teens. Um, 
but uh, free agency starts right after uh, the draft, I believe. Um, and, you know, top 20, I'm going to give you the top 20 free agents, um, unrestricted. Uh, obviously, number one, the Super Bowl MVP, Von Miller, uh, Denver Broncos linebacker. Uh, number two, another Super Bowl player, Josh Norman, on the losing end. But uh, Carolina Panthers cornerback, he'll get a very good contract. Muhammad Wilkerson of the New York Jets, um, this is uh, this is where it's, it's questionable for the Jets because you know you have you have Leonard Wilkinson uh, L- Leonard Williams that they just drafted uh, had a great year. You also have Sheldon Richardson who also needs a deal as well. Um, who they're gonna sign? It's kind of it's kind of hard to say because you know Muhammad Wilkerson is a better player than Sheldon Richardson. Um, he's not in trouble. Sheldon uh, Sheldon Richardson. Um, got into a lot of trouble, obviously, uh, last off season. Um, well, not the last off. I, I forget when it was, but he was, you know, doing like 120 on the parkway, you know, with a gun and weed and a ten, seven year old in in the back seat or something like that. Whatever it was. Um, so it's going to be, uh, you know, hard for the Jets to pick because, you know, they, they might not. It doesn't look like they'll be able to sign both of them. Um, Alshon, uh, Alshon Jeffrey, wide receiver from the Bears. Uh, Cordy Glenn, Buffalo Bills offensive tackle. Jason Pierre-Paul, New York Giants defensive end. Eric Berry, uh, that's not, he's not even going to be able to be touched. Uh, Kansas City will lock him up long time. Uh, Malik Jackson, defensive tackle from the Broncos. Oliver Vernon, Olivier Bern- Vernon. The, uh, Dolphins defensive end Doug Martin Buccaneers running back Bruce Irvin Seattle Seahawks uh, linebacker Russell Okun Seattle Seahawks tackle Eric Weddle San Diego Chargers safety um, I would like Eric Weddle I, I like him a lot um, great player Sam Bradford Philadelphia uh, Eagles quarterback he'll probably be signed as well Kirk Cousins Washington Redskins quarterback um, he'll definitely be uh, having a, a contract sign I don't know if he signed a contract yet um, but I know they were talking about it uh, Matt Forte Bears running back Andre Smith Cincinnati Bengals uh, right tackle Danny Trevathan Broncos linebacker Janoris Jenkins St. Louis Rams cornerback Brock Osweiler Broncos quarterback he will be signed because they won't have Peyton Manning next year uh, also uh, some notable players Derek Johnson Chris Ivory Kelvin Beecham Ryan Fitzpatrick, Haloti Nada, Lamar Miller, Prince of Mukamara, and Anquan Bolden. All free agents next year. Um, so definitely keep an eye on that. Um, the other question is, is DeMarco Murray going to be released? We'll see with that. Um, but uh, I'm going to have to take a break here. We're going to talk about uh, maybe some hockey news when we get back uh, on the Tom and Jerry Sports Show. Do you have sports opinions or do you want to start your own sports debate? Then Overtime is right for you. Overtime is an app for sports lovers made by sports lovers. This is the best place to talk about sports. Overtime is available at the iTunes App Store. Be a part of something big and help us take the game to OT. Overtime, the game never ends. Follow the NFL this season on the Tom and Jerry Sports Show. The evolution of radio. Cyberstation USA. Our inventions change us. They make us think differently. Something new added to the real world. The leading edge of evolution. That development has got to be delivered. Cyberstationusa.com. The most sophisticated that I've ever seen. I'm not sure exactly what the future is, but I'm pretty sure it's not going away. Connecticut School of Broadcasting founder Dick Robinson. You know, the media business has changed a lot since we opened our doors in 1964. Now media content is everywhere, on air, online, on the go. More than ever, companies are looking for people to help drive this new media. At Connecticut School of Broadcasting, you'll get hands-on training on the latest software and equipment in a matter of months, not years. Connecticut School of Broadcasting has placed thousands of grads in broadcast media careers. It's all about versatility. You see at a radio station, if you 
also know how to shoot, edit, and post videos, you become a pretty hot commodity. That's the training you get at Connecticut School of Broadcasting. Connecticut School of Broadcasting with locations up and down the East Coast from Massachusetts to Miami. Call 1-800-TV-RADIO or log on to GoCSB.com. Connecticut School of Broadcasting, the nation's oldest and largest group of broadcast media schools. Redefining training in radio, TV, and new media. Get trained. Get connected. 1-800-TV-RADIO. Training day and night, I'm preparing to fight for everyone that believes crowds going insane. Hear they screaming our name while we spraying champagne. Nothing nobody can say because today is not bad. It's the day that I have always dreamed of. Forever. When you call me, you call me the champ of the world. I can raise my hands, I can scream out the best in the world. And we're back. Uh, as I was, you know, before I went to the break, I was talking about, um, you know, the off season. Um, you got the draft coming up, um, and you know, the, you're really not going to be able to really set a mock draft until, you know, the combine is over because a lot of players, you know, in the combine end up. Um, you know, either stepping up or dropping down. Um, I mean, right now I could give you a little bit of a uh, you know first. This is a this is one that was done today um, <clears throat> from USA Today. Uh, they have Tennessee Titans taking Laramie uh, Tunsil from uh, Mississippi. Uh, number two, they got the Cleveland Browns taking Jared Goff, obviously because of the whole thing with Johnny Manziel. Um, I mean, you can't be more of an idiot than Johnny Manziel, really. Um, I, I never really liked the guy. Um, I thought he's got some talent. Um, I don't like his antics uh, off the field. Um, and then I don't really like his antics on the field. I don't think he uh, – People think I'm crazy. Um, I, I don't. I don't like his play, um, especially when the Cowboys are brought in that conversation because he's not. He doesn't work in their system. There's no. He doesn't jive with their system. Nothing. Nothing that he does 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 anything for the Cowboys. Cowboys have a great line. Why are you going to need a, a a mobile quarterback? You have Tony Romo. This is the this is the kind of this is the kind of stuff I'm talking about. Like a guy like a Jared Goff, a guy you know coming into the draft, obviously uh, from California. Um, he's a pocket passer, but he can also be mobile. But he relies on being a pocket passer. That's what you have to have for the Cowboys. Um, and I'm glad that everything, I mean, I'm not glad, you know, you don't want to hear a guy getting in trouble and stuff like that, but I'm happy that something like this came up because now the Cowboys are forced to stay away from Johnny Manziel. Um, because of everything, especially now that it's coming out that he's beating his ex-girlfriend or whatever she was, his girlfriend. Um, and I thought it was ridiculous that Deion Sanders ever would would even say that his his girlfriend is the problem. No, Johnny Manziel is the problem. Johnny Manziel is the problem. This guy is taking videos of himself drinking. You know you're in the NFL. You know you're not a starter yet. You know you don't even have a career yet. And you're doing stuff like that when you went to when you went to rehab for I mean, he went to rehab longer than most people do. And still, he's still doing this stuff. I mean, I saw one of the videos. He's I think he was in a basement or something like that with a, with a friend or two and and he's drinking uh you know, it's like, "Come on. What are you doing? You're an NFL player now. You're not baby like you were in college." You you know you're you're a Cleveland Brown now. You're not in Cal when they're like, oh, you know what? We have a great quarterback. He will make us a lot of money. You're not in that anymore. I mean, the, the Cleveland Browns will make a lot of money with you, but it, it's not the same. You're looked at by everybody. Do you realize wherever you go, 
there's a phone with a camera that will be on you no matter what you do. Let alone this guy is taking videos of himself. So they have Cleveland Browns taking a quarterback. They got to. Uh, San Diego Chargers, number three, Jalen Ramsey, the cornerback out of Florida State. This one they have the Dallas Cowboys taking Joey Boso, who's probably a lot of a lot will say that he's the best uh, defensive end, uh, the, actually the best player in the draft, Joey Bosa out of Ohio State. Um, you know, I, I just I don't know what to think because, you know, yeah, I, I would love Joey Bosa. You know, he would definitely fit perfectly for Rob uh, Rob Marinelli's defense, um, especially adding to Demarcus Lawrence, and especially that the Cowboys have said that they're going to move on from J- uh, Greg Hardy. Um, that that's the other reason why the Cowboys would not go for Johnny Manziel because of him beating his girlfriend, and then obviously having the whole Greg Hardy thing. Um, but uh, Jacksonville Jaguars taking Miles Jack, uh, Baltimore Ravens taking DeForest Bunkner, uh, San Francisco taking Laquan Treadwell, uh, Miami Dolphins taking Ezekiel Elliott, who has said that he wants to play for the Dallas Cowboys, uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers taking Ronnie Stanley, um, the New York Giants taking Vernon Hargreaves, uh, the third, the cornerback out of Florida, obviously with Prince of Mukamara being a free agent, uh, and he hasn't really been playing well at all, um, but... Um, the biggest thing is with, um, you know, going back to the Cowboys, obviously the biggest thing is if they don't, I don't know what it's going to be, I guess because of free agency starting after the, the draft. I, I believe it starts after the draft. Um, don't quote me on that. But um, if it does do that, you know, it's going to be hard. So if you see the Dallas Cowboys – in the first or second draft, not take a quarterback. Um, I'm probably 95% sure that you will see Robert Griffin III in a Dallas Cowboys uniform. That's how I feel. That's what I think is going to happen. So if you see Joey Bosa taken by the Dallas Cowboys in the first round at number four, um, there's a good chance that Robert Griffin III will be the uh, Cowboys backup. Um, but uh, then I'm going to go straight down to the, the New York Jets. Leonard Floyd at 20. So th- they got the 20th uh, pick. Um, Leonard Floyd, outside linebacker from Georgia. Um, so altogether, you know, um, the Giants, uh, you know, talking about the Giants here, they, it, it's not just one position that they need. They need a lot, a lot. I mean, basically in every every position they need. Um, you know, they have them taking a cornerback in the first round, uh, especially especially that they need the defense. But um, you know, with the Giants, now it's now it's up to Jerry Reese. Jerry Reese needs a very good draft, otherwise he will not be the GM of the the New York Giants next year, or the I mean the year after the next. I guess you could say. Um, you're you're not going to see him as the GM um, because his his drafts have been terrible. You know, go, like dating back, you know, to you know years. Uh, you know, he he'll maybe pick up one. You know, I mean, you got Odell Beckham, who is you know a great pick. Obviously, lately that was probably the best pick of them all lately um the biggest thing is with the Giants is you know it it always seemed like they were going for defensive ends defensive ends defensive ends it was always defensive line uh for the Giants I mean you had Jason Pierre-Paul Michael Strahan Justin Tuck you know all these guys all together Matthias Kiwanuka um you know you would think I was a Giants fan being that I know them but you know I keep an eye on the Giants you could say that I'm a Dallas Cowboys fan so obviously um one thing that they definitely need is a linebacking crew. I mean, they have nothing. Nothing. No linebackers whatsoever. Um, their secondary is terrible, too. Um, obviously, you liked, to, uh, you liked with, uh, what Landon Collins did this year. You like that. Uh, their cornerbacks are terrible. Prince of Mukamura is ter- uh, terrible. Um, but they they didn't get any... They didn't get any pressure on the quarterbacks. Now, the thing is, in the NFL, and the Giants are the, the always 
the example I use with this, you can you can get away with having a so-so secondary. I mean, just ask the Carolina Panthers, actually. You can get away with it if you have a good front seven or a good front four. If you could get pressure with your front four, like the Denver Broncos have done, hence why they won the Super Bowl. If you could get pressure with your front four, I mean, it, it makes it makes your your cornerbacking crew, your your secondary look amazing. That's what it's gonna do. But you know, moving on from you know from football real quick, uh, big news out of the NBA: uh, the Knicks. Obviously, like I said in the in the sixty second summary, they have lost five straight. They have um, they've lost nine out of their last ten. Uh, and they fired Derek Fisher. So uh, that's that's the big news out of today. Uh, the Islanders are coming out of the All-Star break. Um, they lost the first game, I think it was to uh, Washington, uh, but they absolutely wrecked the Edmonton Oilers 8-1. to one. But we're going to talk more about hockey. Um, you know, obviously... You know, with the the weeks coming, uh, you know, my co-host Kevin Donlin is is a very big uh, hockey fan, as am I. Uh, so we'll talk about hockey. You know, you don't really hear it on other sports radio shows. Um, so you, you'll hear it here. So if you want to hear hockey news, come to the Tom and Jerry Sports Show. Um, but I'm going to give quick, you know, Saturday night was the... Uh, the NFL honors, as I was saying before. So I'm going to give you all the award winners. Uh, 2016 Pe- Pepsi NFL Rookie of the Year, Jameis Winston. Uh, FedEx Aaron Ground Players of the Year, Carson Palmer. Um, Adrian Peterson. Uh, AP Off- Offensive P- Rookie of the Year was Todd Gurley. Well-deserved. Uh, AP Offensive Player of the Year presented by Surface was Cam Newton. Um, Salute to Service Award went to Vincent Jackson. Uh, clutch performer of the year, Drew Brees. Uh, AP coach of the year was Ron Rivera. Art Rooney award presented by Bose. Uh, Carl, uh, Charles Woodson, obviously retiring this year. AP defensive rookie of the year, Marcus Peters. AP assistant coach of the year, Wade Phillips. Don Shula high school coach of the year, Michael Burnett. Greatest on the road award, Antonio Brown. AP Defensive Player of the Year, obviously J.J. Watt. Uh, Pro Football Hall of Fame inductees was Brett Favre, no-brainer. Kevin Bra- uh, Kevin Green, linebacker. Harvin, uh, Marvin Harrison, wide receiver. Orlando Pace, outside line, uh, offensive line. Tony Dungy, Ken Stabler, Dick Stanfill, Eddie D. Bartola. NFL.com Fantasy Player of the Year was Antonio Brown. Deacon Jones Award went to J.J. Watt. AP Comeback Player of the Year went to Eric Berry. Uh, Walter Payton NFL Man of the Year went to Anquan Bolden. Uh, Bridgestone Performance Play of the Year was Aaron Rodgers' stunning Hail Mary versus the, line, uh, versus the Lions. And the AP Most Valuable Player was number one, Cam Newton. Um, and that will do it for the Tom and Jerry Sports Show. Thanks for sticking around with me. Uh, Kevin will be back next week. Uh, and we'll talk some hockey on the Tom and Jerry Sports Show. I'm Jerry. Be breezy. Thanks for listening to another episode of the Tom and Jerry Show. 